finally here we are welcome to an exceptional perspective and this is a video that talks about everything you need to know when you are going to iceland from india i'm going to divide this video into three parts pre travel during travel and post travel and i'm going to explain everything as i already told you that you need to know when you want to visit iceland from india i went to iceland for a week alone i rented a camper van and went through the south coast of iceland as per my knowledge i want to share whatever i know to you guys so that it will be useful and you guys wouldn't stress much on it i had to do a lot of research so no wasting time here this is going to be information packed and let's get on right into it the first category is pre travel what are the things that you need to take care before you travel to iceland visa flights and bookings so let's start with visa the visa for iceland is schengen visa you can apply it directly from the vfs global website the website all all the websites and all the links that i am going to talk are going to be in the description in the order in which i am going to talk so you can re refer the description and these are not affiliate links these are the links that i researched and i came across and it will be helpful for you to get everything in one place feel free to check on the links yeah you need to plan this visa appointment as early as possible because the eligibility criteria for applying the visa is before 6 months of your travel the visa processing takes 14 to 15 working days Ex that that is excluding saturdays and sundays and any other public holidays you get during the window search for slots as early as possible and apply it even if you don't have an itinerary you apply it and then we can go through the itinerary and get on with the checklist okay so once you once you create an account and, and get your visa appointment through vfs global website you can download a checklist that you need to go through and prepare documentation for that you have to submit to the uh, iceland embassy there would be doubts regarding which country should you apply for i am talking especially for iceland i went on a, i went directly to iceland and came back from iceland so it is straight forward for me but there are schengen rules that says you need to apply to the country where you stay the maximum in the schengen area for if your whole trip is for 30 days and you are staying in iceland for more than 16 days so you need to apply schengen visa to iceland's embassy you can download the checklist from the website given in the description your passport should be valid for the last 6 months and also one year after the travel and the photo for the application will be the passport size photo that eu recommends uh, you can get the me measurements from the checklist itself and also very uh, very well known photo studios also do this like gk well i got it through them and once you download the checklist if you go through the checklist you will have different categories in them so we'll go one by one next is travel insurance you need to have a minimum of 50000 usd or 30000 euros of travel insurance that cost costed me around uh, 1800 to 2000 rupees i believe you you should have the travel insurance for the entire duration for the flight tickets you you need to book the flight tickets and you need to show the proof to the embassy wh while you are going to the appointment but there is no rule that it should be paid in full you can reserve your slot and then pay the flight tickets once you get the visa and the same goes for accommodation also you need to book accommodation for the entire duration of the trip and uh, this also comes into the same category reservation is enough there is no need to pay in full the embassy also understands this your strong ties to india if you are employed and you want to go to european countries then you need to show your employment your company's joining letter your pay slips for the past 3 months and a leave sanction letter from your company and then you should make sure you have sufficient funds in your bank account there shouldn't be any sudden deposits or credits in large transactions in your account and you need to give them 6 months of your bank statement and on the day of the application you need to make sure that you have at least 4000 Iceland kronas in your bank account per day if you are not paying for flights and rooms you need to make sure that that fund is also covered in the balance sheet that you show them so and 6 months is compulsory in the checklist they have mentioned that 3 months is sufficient but 
they've called me back again and asked me to send six months of bank statement. So make sure you get it right the first time. Income tax returns of the previous two years. Next comes the cover letter. This covering letter should have the details on your purpose of visit and what you're going to do in this. And also mention, if possible, the complete itinerary in a, speci in a specific table format. Sometimes the flight itinerary and the hotel bookings are also enough since you have attached it in the same envelope. But it's better to mention where you are going and what you are doing in a tabular format. And there is an option in, in the application asking whether you have to apply for multiple entries or a single entry. It means single entry into the Shenzhen area and once you come back, you can't go again. It doesn't mean that once you enter Iceland, you can't go to other Shenzhen countries. You can, you can visit other Shenzhen countries. It might be straightforward, but for people who don't know, I'm just repeating this. So single entry means once you go into the Shenzhen area, you can roam around in the Shenzhen area in flights, in bus, whatever it is. And once you come back from the Shenzhen area, you can't go back in. So it's always better to apply for multiple entries. There is no harm in doing that. They may provide only a single entry for you. That was the case with me. And please remember, in your flight booking, you need to make sure the connecting flights do the baggage transfer automatically or you need to be specifically informed or you need to be aware that you need to go out to the baggage claim, get your baggage and again check in. Sometimes inside the Shenzhen area, there will be flights that don't support this feature, the automatic baggage transfer feature. So you need to make sure that you're booking it. And yeah, please remember, you need to show strong ties to India. And I'm talking about tourist type of visa. Your purpose is itself tourism. So you go there, enjoy the landscapes, and then you come back. That's one point every officer looks for. How strong are you connected to India and how can you come back? So it's better if you have any FDs or any other investments here or properties on your name or any such thing, it's better to attach in the envelope, in the application. All the documents attached in the application and checklist have to be taken as physical copies. Soft copies are not allowed. You need to give one physical copy to them. So make sure you have it everything in order and take it to the VFS Global office when you reach on the application date. And if you feel this information is overloading and something like that, always please feel free to call VFS directly. And also there are some travel agencies that give proper information on how to apply the visa to Iceland, Shenzhen in general. So you can always browse for more information everywhere. There is an online application form. I'm linking the website also in the description. You need to fill that to the office that you have booked your slot to. Means I, I got a Chennai slot, Chennai office slot, and I have applied the application to the Bangalore office. So I had to reapply it to the Chennai office. It's very dumb of me, I know. But you, you get tensed and you don't know what you do. So please remember to fill the online application form also and not the offline copy. So once you go to the VFS Global Office on your appointment date, you submit your documents, finish all the procedure. You'll get a call from the embassy in about 10 to 12 days asking for the purpose of your travel and why you are traveling, where you are traveling. You need to be aware on your travel routes and where you're gonna stay. They'll just politely inquire on your current status and everything. And then once the visa is approved, you will get the visa back through couriers. Mine was Blue Dart. I don't know what was the, what is the official thing. You will get the passport along with the visa stamping to the couriers. So once you get the courier, now starts the actual preparation for travel. If you haven't paid the flight tickets in full before the appointment and you have just reserved the flight tickets, there will be some cutoff date. So before that, you'll have to pay the paid to the flights and make sure that you, you have your booking confirmed. You have now got visa, you have done your flight bookings. Next is transportation. I rented a camper van for the whole six to seven days I was in Iceland. There are many camper van websites such as Cuckoo Campers, Go Campers, Camp Easy, Indie Campers and many such. I've got, I'm gonna list those in the description, please don't worry. I personally went with Cuckoo Campers and I can recommend them 100%. The service was great. People were fantastic, they were very approachable. They constantly keep in touch with you whenever you have any doubts or something like that. Yeah, about camper vans, 
if you don't want to go with camper vans i would suggest you at least take a normal car rental to yourself for the whole trip because self driving is the way to go in iceland and you don't need to worry about license indian license is sufficient if you have your license with english wordings on it so they are going to accept that so no need to worry no need to apply for international driving permit but if you want to be on the safer side like me you can still apply go to your wahan website and then apply for international driving permit there too rental vehicles there are normal cars four cross four cars there is also blue car rental for normal cars but if you want to go with the camper vans you need to make sure that smaller camper van like the one that i have rented do not provide electricity inside the camper van but some camper van, some high end camper vans do provide electricity so please make sure you check on that during your booking and with normal camper vans and normal cars you can't go on roads that have f before them there are some roads called as f roads in iceland those are mostly gravel roads and to drive on those you definitely need a four cross four vehicle you can't drive with normal vehicles and they are open mostly in summers only only one or two main f roads will be open throughout the season but please make sure what your target is if it is just going around the country having a proper road trip i would suggest normal car is enough but if you are going in heavy winters or you want to explore the f roads in summers i would suggest you definitely go for a four cross four there are four cross four camper vans also so please make sure you do your research before booking according to you and please remember insurance plays a very big role in iceland there are different segments of insurance that you can take for the entire trip every car rental will come with a normal insurance and there is gravel protection ash protection and all damage protection flat tire protection any body damage protection all all such things super collision protection all all those things you can go, each website has different levels of different naming termino, different terminologies and different levels of insurance so please go through them and i would suggest to take the top end version of the insurance because iceland roads and iceland weather is completely unpredictable it can vary within hours so please go for the highest insurance level there are also add-ons like gps camper chairs power backup mobile data hotspots that is wifi routers and cooking gas burners and stuff like that so some some camper van websites do include some of these and some do not sleeping bag also so please make sure you select the proper equipment that you need or you pack it while you, while you prepare to your trip so by now you have booked your flights camper vans and accommodations and uh, coming to accommodation don't need to worry about campsites pre booking because you can directly drive into the campsites and then book your slot take your slot then and there in summers the campsites become very crowded so if you are going in the peak season you need to pre book your campsites but generally they are going to be pretty chill about the slots you can directly drop in and book your slot and coming to accommodation there are hostels accommodation is definitely very expensive in iceland there are hostels that are on the budgetary end of accommodation even then is slightly expensive so be prepared for it everything in iceland is expensive then comes what are the activities you are going to do during your trip there are a lot of guided tours like golden circle tour whale watching northern lights chasing tour all these are from the capital city reykjavik and also there are ice cave tours katla ice cave and there is one ice cave near diamond beach there are these guided ice cave tours glacier hikes and there are companies like arctic adventure troll expeditions i'm going to link these websites in the description i personally went with troll expeditions for their glacier hike so it was very wonderful and i would 100% recommend it and there are different levels of the guided tours from 2 hours to 6 hours please go to their website and select whichever you feel is comfortable to you and there is also silfra fisher snorkeling adventure that you can book from reykjavik and other activities include very famous blue lagoon sky lagoon and glacier lagoon the hot springs you can also pre book these from their website it's better to pre book always because you don't know what's going to happen in the weather and stuff like that and coming to this glacier hike and stuff like that if you feel if the weather forecast is bad you, there is always an option of pre scheduling rescheduling the 
guided tour that is very handy i like that feature very much so this concludes the first part of our video the pre travel part of iceland since everything is booked you have done all your research and things are now in shape let's go to the travel mode first thing is packing what should you pack for iceland this usually is a personal choice but if you ask me i would say pack a lot of layers it's always cold in iceland if you can absorb cold and you are fine with cold even then i would suggest you to pack your layers because it's extremely windy and you are not prepared for that wind 100% pack as minimum as possible but pack all the layers a thick jacket thermals your gloves and your ear pieces all this and please do remember if you are going for any guided tours ice cave walks or glacier tours you need to have waterproof boots the hiking hiking boots which which are about ankle length high so that's a compulsory if you are not carrying those from here you will get it for rent there you can rent it from the from the companies itself and don't make the mistake that i made i had a small handy laptop bag and then a chicken bag and then a carry on bag minimize luggage as much as possible i took all my filmmaking gear and stuff like that so please prioritize what you want and only take those and keep the luggage constraint in mind and there are flight companies like play airlines iceland air for the local flights they do have some restriction on the luggage size that you carry on along with you into your cabin so please make sure you align your dimensions of your check in bag or cabin bag to the specifications given you may think it's going to be cold there and you wouldn't need these things but i would suggest you to take a moisturizer and a sunscreen i got pretty tanned after i came back maybe it's because of going to the extreme north i don't know the exact practical reason but i'm just guessing and drinking water you can just drink the water coming from the tap it's all from the glacier so there is no need for you to buy you can just go to a tap fill your water bottle with the tap water and and then drink but not the hot water that comes in the tap in the capital city the hot water has some sulfur content or something it smells a little if you want hot water you need to get the tap water and then boil it in the water kettle and please take a raincoat with you not an umbrella since it's very windy the umbrella is going to go away you need to have a raincoat or waterproof clothing with you and also your power bank universal eu adapter please make sure they are in working condition the camper van that i had booked is a small one and it did not have electricity inside so charging my laptop was a little problematic and my camera also so i had to charge in the common areas in the campsites and cafes so please prioritize your charging material also if you are taking a lot of electronics and coming to food you are going so far you need to experience icelandic flavors yeah i totally agree the capital city is the best place for you to explore the food options there are guided food searching places food searching tours and stuff like that but if you ask me personally food is generally a little expensive compared to the other european countries so my suggestion would be to take some ready made ready to eat food from india itself i took chapatis ready to eat chapatis and theplas and also tomato curry and ready to eat curries there are supermarkets throughout iceland called as kronan and bonus so these two have pretty good collection i went around the south coast so i didn't face any problem so you can also buy groceries from there and you can cook in your camper van or in the common kitchen sites or in your room also if you are going for a room based travel in kuku campus main office i was pleasantly surprised with this feature they have a corner in the office where you can exchange food you can take the food that was kept by some other people and you can take from there and you can keep whatever you want and there might be such places in other camper van offices also i personally do not know so please do check and please do share if you have excess food after completing your trip it will be useful for other people too and next is the stamping procedure once you enter a schengen country you have a stamping that protocol going on so my travel was from bangalore to munich munich to zurich zurich to reykjavik it's all connecting flights its travel time was around 17 hours but since i am entering into munich first i had to go through the immigration of munich airport before boarding zurich flight so i get a stamp there and from zurich to reykjavik i do not get one because it's considered 
inside shenzhen area same thing while coming back to i came i came back from iceland reykjavik to paris and paris to frankfurt and frankfurt to bangalore and my stamping was done in frankfurt airport if you are somebody like me who wanted the proof of iceland travel i would say you wouldn't get it ideally until and unless you book a direct flight to reykjavik now you have reached iceland after the stamping right so you will reach to keflavik airport international airport that's the international airport in iceland there is a domestic airport in reykjavik but only small part of airline travels do support do have travel to reykjavik airport all the major airlines and international travels happen to keflavik and it's about 30 to 45 minutes from keflavik airport to reykjavik capital city and there is blue lagoon right in between keflavik and reykjavik so if you want a pleasant experience you can either prioritize it first or on the last day depends on your travel plan once you get in into keflavik airport you first come across the duty free shops as usual as in every international travel the liquor they say it's very expensive inside the country so most of them purchase duty free items there after you cross the customs you have a waiting area the arrivals and departures waiting area it's a fairly small airport so it's not going to be much area to explore so once you go in if you have opted for a free shuttle service from airport to your camper office or your rental office your represent the representative from the company will be there with holding their company logo or your name it depends on how you communicate to them they are going to ask you your timings and they are going to come and pick you up there is a fly bus bus service from airport to the capital city also if you have not opted for any of this so you can also for every half an hour so you can also take that that's about keflavik airport there's not much to discuss but once you go to your camper van office be sure to take a video of the entire camper van and also the checklist that they are going to show you i i didn't take a video because i didn't understand what was going on until i took the camper van into my hand it's just a safety precaution if you have prepared only a little amount of your car rental you have to pay in full on the day of your travel there with the insurances if you want to expand you can do that there once you take your rental vehicle be sure to enjoy your first moments driving on the left hand side of the road and regarding fuel mostly the vehicle comes comes to you with a full tank it's generally a rule that you have to give it a full tank while returning also early drop offs doesn't mean you get your refund back you might get the rentals of insurance and other add ons back but the car rentals are generally non refundable and if you are not sure on how to start your trip and where to go the camper van office friends are very friendly they guide you they even refer you to the very good places and must watch places and based on the weather and road conditions please make sure that you talk to them you tell your itinerary and you make sure that you are in good condition to go around coming to fuel i took a diesel based camper van the the fuel stations are all self filling fuel stations so once you go there there are different colors designated to each of the fuel dispensers the black one is for diesel and these are all prepaid dispenser machines you have to first put your card in and select the amount and then do the fuel filling i noticed that you do not have a tank full option after you cross selfos gas station make sure you have an idea on how much you are paying and how much you are filling in beforehand diesel for me was fairly on par with indian conditions it's around 130 rupees per liter it was not that much of a difference my camper van was a 75 liter camper van so i had to fill for about 20k indian rupees for the whole trip that only includes the south coast yeah i told you about the supermarkets earlier so there are two major supermarket chains kronan and bonus so please make sure you get all the necessary items there because campsites generally do not have any groceries and grocery sh shops nearby so please make sure you fill your vehicle with the food that you need and next the experience that i have waited for a long time the campsites there is a website from go campers that's very reliable on these campsite locations i am going to link it in the description please definitely check it out and please keep it handy please keep on checking 
the locations while you travel and you can just drop in as i told you to the camp campsites and then book your slot there and go in so once you go in some campsites you have to tell the person in the reception when you are coming out before you are checking out if you are coming back in so please make sure you have some good communication with the people there generally the check in happens after 6 pm and check out happens at 11 am the next day so if you are staying before and after that please make sure you communicate properly to the people present there some campsites do not take cards please make sure you have some petty cash with you i know credit cards are accepted throughout iceland but having some cash with you is still a necessity you don't know what happens when so this is just a precaution i had to pay 20 usd for a camper site and 20 usd not 20 usd it's in iceland kronos but converted into usd is 20 usd and card was not accepted their machine was not functioning or something like that so i had to pay it through cash so th- there my cash came in handy please do carry some cash usd and euros and kronos are all accepted there if you take a four cross four also you can stay in the campsites but you need to sleep in the four cross four and generally they themselves do not recommend it because campsites are built differently the batteries of the heater that's going to run inside the camper van is different than accessory related battery and coming to the word charging one hour of continuous driving will recharge the camper van's heater battery and the heater runs continuously for 8 hours so no need to worry about that those are two different batteries and that's a very good mechanism that's been implemented there and the campsites cost about 2500 to 3000 iceland kronas once you park your camper van there is a common area in the campsites you have common bathrooms a common kitchen area and a dining hall where you can sit and eat mostly so some campsites do not offer a kitchen area you have to cook inside your camper but you have a common sitting area and hot showers are all free in the campsites uh, only one or two campsites there is a pay, pay machine in the shower area for you to take your shower but mostly they are free make sure you carry wet wipes also there is no water for the toilet region you need to i don't know for indians it's pretty difficult you need to wipe there are also laundry machines in the campsites the chain is called ice laundry or something you have a dryer machine and a washer washer machine two machines separately and you need to make two different transactions for accessing each of them it costs around 900 isk for each of the machine 900 for dryer and 900 for the washer you cannot park your camper van on the road side of the roads or something like that and you cannot move out of the road and park it as you wish because it's prohibited there there are very scenic locations all around the iceland but the icelandic people have done a lot of research and they have separate parking bays for every scenic location you get this parking bays very frequently you can park there and then take rest or enjoy the scenic beauties but please do not park on the sides of please do not pull over on side of side of roads and the speed limit in iceland is 70 kilometers to 90 kilometers on the ring road so please make sure you follow that speed limit there are cameras and you and the fines in iceland is very heavy please make sure you are following the speed limit also and off roading is strictly prohibited in iceland as i told you there are some roads with the name with the letter f attached to it f they call it f roads so these are mostly gravel roads only four cross four can go there and that's the closest you get to the off roading experience please respect the decision to conserve the nature and while driving please be careful about the slippery conditions of the road and the blizzards and it's pretty scary they even move your camper van from one lane to the other so please be careful about that to check this there are three websites road.is safe travel.is and vdur vedur.is all these three websites are in the description please check it out and please bookmark these websites you have to check these websites every day not every day three times a day because road.is shows the road conditions and slippery conditions and road closures it can vary from 3 hours you can get a new update every 3 hours or 6 hours and also there are cc cameras focused towards the highway so you can see your life status how many vehicles have passed and is it good to go and stuff like that and vedur.is so it it has the weather information and the wind information there is also english version of the website available 
you just type in en.vedur.is and safetravel.is also has an app version and it's a mixture of both road.is and vedur.is so please check this and if you're going in winters you would probably wish to see northern lights aurora forecast and my aurora are the apps to check the forecast and prediction near your area and if somebody spots an aurora they just update it in the app you can keep on looking for notifications of such uh, appearances and then follow to those locations those are other two extra apps that you need to download in the winters if you are going for northern lights chasing or something like that there are two more apps parka p a r k a and easy park these two apps are for you to pay the parking fee in the tourist destinations most of the tourist destinations now have paid parking facilities only the scenic locations on the road on either side of the road are parking free but mostly they are now going towards paid parking in the tourist destinations so you can either pay the parking fee in the kiosk present at the locations or through the app scanning the location scanning the qr on the parking board in the location there are also some features in this parka app uh, like if you pay for skaftafell glacier parking and diamond beach parking in the same day that is bit in the 24 hour window you get 50% off of the second parking or something like that there are these offers keep on changing so please make sure you get up, updated with the offers and stuff like that and now after everything you also need to enjoy so you also need to know what places to visit coming to the places of interest to see the iceland map in general there are three things you need to prioritize one the golden circle the small circle from the capital city and there is a very big circle called as road 1 that is the ring road road number 1 that covers the entire stretch of the country and also there is a small diamond circle on the north of iceland that you need to uh, make sure travel to if you are going in summers and weather cooperates in winters and also the peninsula region somewhere on the west northwest of iceland so these are major uh, major points that you need to cover and keep in mind when you travel to iceland and if you want to go to the coast coastal re- coastal area from the ring road there are uh, some are f roads and some are normal roads so you, you need to make sure that you have proper equipped vehicles with you to travel there Th- there are guided tours for the golden circle from reykjavik and in winters generally this golden circle consists of the national park thingvellir national park please please excuse the pronunciation i pronounce the words from whatever i could grasp but i am going to put it on the screen for you to get the exact wordings the first first place in the golden circle is the thingvellir national park where you have excellent hiking locations and waterfalls i parked my car in parking p5 and then went towards parking p3 and then towards the waterfalls but there are a lot of hiking trails there to download the uh, official map and check the hiking trails there and then after the national park you have geyser the hot geyser that blows up every now and then every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes and gulfoss waterfalls and the crater kerid and you end at selfoss so this can mostly be covered in one day or if you are prioritizing more hiking trails you can go for two days if you have more time and and generally if you are planning for a road trip in iceland people will suggest to go around the outer ring road that is road number 1 you can cover the entire south coast from starting from selfoss to the skogafoss waterfalls and then wick where you have black beach rennes fiera again please excuse the pronunciation rennes fiera black beach and then you can go to this skaftafell glacier and then to the diamond beach and then end your south coast at half that's what i did i covered this distance and came back in the same route if you have more time and weather does permit you can go around you can go towards the east east has beautiful landscapes and north is very scenic it seems like you are on different planet on each of the places when you visit iceland it's that beautiful and pictures do not do justice you need to experience it with your own eyes so i would suggest go around the country have some leisure time 9 to 12 days is an appropriate amount of time for you to cover the entire country or if you want to just have an experience of iceland go towards the south cover it up in 3 to 4 days and come back there is no in between i would say there is no in between there are no toll gates in iceland only one tunnel 
and the rules of the tunnel will be explained by the camper people uh, where you should pay how you should pay the toll gate you have to pay the toll gate uh, toll fee 24 hours ahead or 24 hours after you reach the tunnel and that's the only place where you pay toll for driving on road all other roads are free f for you to drive and explore around and there are places like plane crash site where you would need to walk for 45 minutes to one hour there are buses in such places there are shuttle services in such places where you need to pay them and then they'll take you to to and fro from the visiting point and there are some beautiful waterfalls like that Detifos, if I am pronouncing it correctly, in the diamond circle of the Iceland. This can be visited only if weather permits. If you are going in winters, please keep an open mind. Other parts include the peninsula for Puffin Watch and also the lonely mountain that's nearby to the capital city and you can come back to the capital city. And there are a lot of things to do in the capital city. The parking behind the Nordic church is a free parking. So if you go early in, you can park your car, car there. I did the same. And the other parking on the streets of Reykjavik are paid parkings. So you need to see where you have to pay. You need to pay for the parking. And once you park your car, you can visit the Nordic church. You can go to the top and you can go to the Rainbow Church, the flea market and, and explore the streets of Reykjavik with beautiful graffiti. And you can explore the culture there. The Harpa Center, the beach road, everything is all very beautiful. It's a very well-established tourist site and you can ha you can taste food in cafes like Cafe Loki and there are hot dog stands all over. Walking on streets of Reykjavik is definitely a beautiful experience. I would suggest you to try it. And now, coming to finances. I am a solo traveler from Bangalore. I'm gonna put the breakdown of the expenses that I had in the trip. I had to spend around 2.75 to 2.8 lakhs in total. Roughly, we can put it as 3 lakhs per person. And this might vary if you went with a group because diesel sharing and vehicle sharing and all those stuff. So the expenses vary a lot from my expenses to your possible travel expenses. So please keep that in mind. I, I had to reschedule another flight. So 50 euros was there for rescheduling and stuff like that and my flights costed around 1 lakh and my camper van costed around 95,000 plus diesel comes around 20,000 and these are all in Indian rupees these are all after converting from Iceland krona to Indian rupees and adding GSTs coming to adding GSTs why add GSTs all the credit cards maybe there are some credit cards that do not do this I don't know I don't have any awareness regarding this but I had two cards, one credit card and one Forex card. I loaded some euros into the Forex card and I tried swiping there. And India, Indian rupees to euros it's, itself is a conversion. And from euros, it again converted to Iceland Krona. So there was double conversion charge. And then in normal credit cards, there is a conversion from INR to ISK and then a GST on the transaction. So please keep in mind all this. It's very minor, but when you add it up, you feel a little. You feel the amount is a little significant. I bought food in supermarkets for around 10k. I took a lot of food from India. I didn't spend too much for food there. The camper parkings in the tourist destinations and the campsites costed me around 20 to 25k combined in total. And then glacier hike costed me around 12k. And depending on your requirements, you can shop. My total came around 3 lakhs. So this is pre-travel and travel and please don't forget the post-travel part also. I did a mistake here. I did not rest up properly after coming back from the trip. I, even though the time difference is not very huge, I would definitely tell you to rest up for complete one to one and a half day. That's definitely required. Otherwise you'll feel the after effects till 10 to 15 days of travel. If you are a frequent international tra uh, traveler, then this is nothing for you, I feel. But for somebody traveling the first time, please keep in mind, you need to rest up properly. So this is everything you need to know about Iceland. I think I've covered everything in detail. This is going to be a very long video. If you are watching it for this long, thank you for bearing. <laughs> But I felt all this should be consolidated. You get all this information throughout the internet, but I felt consolidating it into one place is always useful to people. So thank you so much for watching. And now I can tell you, have a good journey. Happy journey.
and please make memories in iceland thank you